Daniela, welcome to Landscape Photography World. How are you going? Hi, Grant. I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolute pleasure to have you on the show. I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about why you became a photographer, why you became a professional photographer. But I guess, first off, what does photography mean to you? What is it in your life? Photography for me, it's actually a way of connecting with nature and with people. I think having a camera in my hands is actually an excuse to approach strangers and to make a connection with them. I think that's that's beyond the landscape photography, but it also happens with nature. I think it makes me feel more aware of what's happening around me, pay more attention to details and not just images, but sounds, smells and everything. It just switches you on when you've got a camera in your hands, at least that's what happens to me. Okay. Where did it all start for you? What what got you started in photography? Was it a childhood mm -hmm. thing or was it did it come later in life? It started as a teenager. I did a very basic photography course as a teenager. Mm -hmm. And at the time, it was actually a great way of expressing myself. How teenagers normally go through troubled years sometimes. Not that I had a troubled teenage sure. years, but it's just... A nice way of trying to understand the world around you mm -hmm. and relate to people and express yourself so for me it started as a teenager when i first did a short course and i just got hooked by it so i've been doing photography on and off since then after a bit later i started traveling quite a lot so i got into travel photography and then once i moved to australia I started doing as a hobby, but I started doing portraits, weddings, and I got into sports photography, which is something I absolutely love doing. Kept going with travel because I love traveling. Sure. It's a big part of my life. And, and then later on, I actually started aerial photography. I started using a drone in a 2000. So it's been a few years now, and I absolutely love this perspective that the drone gives. Yeah. And, and since then, I've actually incorporated aerial photography into my sports, travel, and events photography. Okay, great. Big part of it. So, what made you decide to come to Australia? I was born in Brazil, and uh, I originally actually um, did a course. I did an oceanography course. I'm actually right. an oceanographer, um, and I worked for a few years as an oceanographer back in Brazil. But then I decided to go traveling. And I've been traveling ever since, basically. No, I, so I, I moved to Europe. I lived in Europe for a few years after that, and I ended up in Australia. So I've been in Australia for about 25 years now. Wow. And I'm in Margaret River, which is a beautiful region yeah, stunning, in the southwest of Australia. It is, yes. So I've been here for about 25 years, and I've been doing photography professionally for about um, 12, 15 years. Yes. What is it that, I guess, motivates you creatively? What inspires you creatively? What are the things that you're looking for when you're out in the field or working with the drone? I, I love color. It's something that really attracts me, color and movement. And maybe it's part of my Brazilian background somehow. So I normally look for color and shapes, textures, especially when I'm using the drone. I often, even when I do sports photography, I often like to have a big landscape, mm. but have the human figure in it. So I like to mix the landscape with sports. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just the drone gives this completely different perspective. And it's quite a challenge. Uh, uh, landscape you've got the light changing all the time but if i'm using it in sports photography you've actually got your subject moving all the time so, yeah. and i actually really enjoy the challenge of trying to uh, having this limited time and trying to get a nice composition while everything is happening and moving yeah fair enough fair enough well i i guess i like the challenge <laughs> certainly sounds like it speaking of challenges do you set creative challenges for yourself in your own work Less so on the commercial side, because obviously somebody says, 
I want you to shoot this event or I want you to shoot my piece of real estate or whatever it is. But for your own personal work, are you do you set yourself creative challenges at all? I'm always trying to learn something new or come up with a different angle or perspective. And even for client photography and, and sports, if it's an event that I do every year, because I do have some clients that I photograph their event every year, sure. I still need to, it's even a bigger, I think, I, it, I still need to come up with different angles and something different every year, yep. which can be quite hard. Some of the events I've been photographing, I've been doing for eight, nine years, but it, it's so I think it's the same that I do in my own personal creative photography, just always trying to come up with something different and trying new things and using like the drone was something that I started just as out of curiosity. And now it's a big part of my work. Yeah. Um, I've just recently got a, an underwater housing for my camera. It's something new like something new that I have another challenge. But I think that's what actually keeps you motivated to have yeah, yeah. something new and always trying to learn new skills, which I reckon you can, independent of what type of photography you do, you can use those skills in everything. So it's I think it's important to try to keep um, challenging yourself. Fantastic, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you set projects for yourself or is it more free-flowing? Uh, it's more free flowing. I think normally my projects are actually travel projects. Okay. So right. there are a few places that I really want to get to. Yep. Um, that's what I will aim for. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. Speaking of travel, where whereabouts have you got on your list? What's coming up next? Uh, I've got a trip planned to Komodo, which is on a live board so there will be a lot of probably aerial photography yeah. uh, hopefully i can try my underwater housing <laughs> it's a beautiful area for snorkeling and diving mm. um, last year i was actually in raja ampat which is also in indonesia and it's yep. a stunning part of the world um yeah there is always something there are quite a few places on my bucket list <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm, i know mine's never ending it's uh, yes <laughs> But uh, there's still a, a lot in Australia that I haven't hit, let alone getting right. overseas. And the overseas list is very long. Yes. <laughs> and and often you visit a place which is just so stunning, it ends up getting back into the bucket list. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> you want to go back. Yeah. To go back, exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So what's your approach to photography in terms of where it moves from just recording an experience or recording a scene in front of you to where it becomes something that's more artistic? I think there are two things there. One is to try to actually add emotion into your image. If there is people involved would be the situation or whatever emotion the person is going through. And with a landscape would probably be a lot about the light yep. and yeah, the feeling, the I think you can actually have emotion even on abstract images. Yeah. yeah. So I think what I'm really trying to do and probably what a lot of photographers try to do is to add that emotional, emotionally charge your image, which is yeah. probably what's going to get people's attention and make them think about it. Yeah. So that's something I aim for, whether I'm doing photos of an event or people or a landscape. Do you find it difficult trying to infuse your own personal expression into your commercial work or is it or does that come easy for you it's i think i do it without thinking and i it's probably what happens when people say oh i seen the photo and i think i know who the photographer is because they've got a style i think it's actually yeah. something that after a while if you've done enough photos hopefully will come naturally People will look at your image and think, yeah, that looks like one of your images. I actually had people saying that to me. And I don't think it doesn't matter if it's a, um, a landscape or a travel photography or event photography or sports. There, there is an element there which is common to all my images. I don't think I'm trying to infuse it in the image. It's just, yeah, I think at this point, hopefully it comes naturally. 
it's basically I'm trying to shoot things that I like. Um, like, like I mentioned to you, I love color and shapes and movements. So that's probably something that I try to, I normally would have in most of my images. For someone that hasn't seen your work, how would you describe your style? Colorful. I, yeah, I often like to have a range of things. If I'm trying to, even if I'm traveling to a place, I'll probably try to have like a, a wide landscape, but I'll have details of the local food. I like to go through the whole range to actually show the place as a whole. Yeah, and, and that's why, yeah, I think it's actually important for me to have this range. Like, I don't want to concentrate only on wide landscape photos. Yeah, sure. Because I'm actually also interested in little details and people who live in the place and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, color. It's probably one of the things that pops out in my photos. Yeah. yeah. How has your style developed and changed over time and where do you see it going? Do you see it changing significantly? Are you adding always adding things to your processing or, or whatever as, as you learn new skills? I don't think my processing has, has changed much. I like contrast in my images. I don't like to over edit my photos. You see a lot of landscape images which look amazing, but you wonder if the colors are actually there or if it's just the personal interpretation at the editing time. So yeah. I prefer not to go overboard with my editing. I actually like to show nature because I think one of the reasons I photograph is to also bring attention to the beautiful, amazing nature around us. Mm. So I would be misleading people to change colors too much or delete things in yeah. the image and yes yeah, so i think my editing is i try not to over edit and it's been like that for a while and i'm not planning on changing i might occasionally do some work where i will actually create something different which is doesn't exist but then it's actually done purposely for that yeah. it's not an image that i went out and yes yeah okay in terms of that uh, low touch editing style and whatever one of the things that i've recently incorporated in my workflow is looking at using multiple white balances using masking so actually changing the white balance say for the sky the mid ground and the foreground to okay. different values by by masking and i've you get very different colors depending on which white balance settings you choose is that something that you've looked at at all no i haven't does it still look like a natural image? Yeah, but the, the intent is to make it look as I saw it. And yes. Yeah. It, because your eye can actually manage multiple white balance. A lot of people don't. Yes. Know this. yes. Your, your eye can actually manage multiple white balances on the yes. fly without you and, and your mind is, is, is thinking about it. You don't have to consciously concentrate on it. You just see the colours. And so I've found by doing that, it's giving me more control over how the image actually looks so that the sky, if I saw that the sky was quite blue, but if I selected, say, a warm white balance for the foreground, because that was quite warm, then the sky is going to start to tinge purple and mauve, which yeah. I don't want. So then I have to, it's just a technique, as I say, that I've found that it helps manage those so that you end up with a, a, a better overall result all right no i haven't tried that there you go that's yeah. a new idea something new in terms of how you go about working in the field do you have a, a concept of what it is that are you pre-visualizing or are you just reacting to the landscape when you're in it it's actually both I like to do pre-planning for either travel or sports photography. I often go to the places and I do a recon of the area if I can, if it's a sports event. And travel, I do a lot of planning, but so I actually don't, I know I won't miss something really important, but I actually like when I'm there to be switched on and just or whatever feels right or looks like I might get a different image. 
So I do a lot of pre-planning, but I like to be flexible about it. So I can actually go with the flow. And even for traveling, um, there might be places where I think it would be very nice to get photos, but I might see something completely different on the side and just, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, yeah, I like to do both, basically. Fair enough. How did you get started in professional photography and working in that field as opposed to just being many people, it never becomes a career, it just becomes a hobby. How did you make that choice to say, okay, photography is where I want to be? Yeah, so I've, like I said, I started as a teenager and something that at the time I did on and off, but I've always loved it. When I moved to Australia, I started doing some freelance work and it got, I started getting more and more work. And then I was at one stage part, doing part-time, having a part-time job and doing part-time photography. And then about six years ago, so I was even the part-time job, I was working in the arts industry. So about five, six years ago, there were some changes in the structure of the place I was working in. I was left with a choice of finding another part-time job and keeping the photography part-time or actually trying to go full-time with the photography. And, uh, and I decided to try photography full-time and it was the best choice I could have made. And I just love doing it. I, I think it's amazing that people are actually paying me to do something I love doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and of course, it's still work. It's still a job. You might love doing photos and being out in the field, but there is all the office work, emails, quotes, and invoices. So there is the whole thing yeah. that comes with it. But I still love doing it, even if I don't enjoy that much the business side of it, let's say. Yes. I, I was going to say, in, in terms of balancing that, how do you balance the photography side, particularly the personal work, as opposed to the commercial stuff pays the bills, right? And you've got to go and do that, so you've got to prioritise yes. that. I get that. But how do you balance the admin work and the the marketing, all of the hats you've got to wear because you're the yes. chief financial officer, you're the chief marketing officer, you're the chief photographer, etc. Oh, how do yes. you do all of that? You have to be a jack of all trades, so yeah, unfortunately. Lucky for me, I'm actually a very organized person. That makes a big <laughs> Even if I don't enjoy doing that side or some of it, I still make it happen. And with the photography side of it, I actually... A lot of my personal work blurs a bit with the commercial work, especially the travel side of it. So I yeah. might be doing a trip, which is essentially a holiday and end up getting work out of it somehow. Yeah, it so I think on the photography side, the lines get a bit blurred, <laughs> which I don't mind. Yeah, it's fine with me. But yeah, the business side of it, you, yeah, I think, yeah, it's not easy to be to do the whole thing but yeah if, if you're organized it helps it helps a little bit i think yeah oh it makes a massive difference being organized versus being disorganized yeah. i i tend to be more disorganized than i am organized but you have to put some structure around what you're doing i think and that's, that's one of the most important things that i've certainly learned what have you learned what's the most important thing you've learned from running your business I think the most important thing, hmm, I think relationships are very important. Mm -hmm. So I think keeping good business relationships and people enjoy working with pleasant people. Yeah, absolutely. Just the cultivating relationships. And even if it's clients or business that you think you might never work with them again. I think it's too important to maintain a good relationship. It's just, yeah, yeah. it helps with word of mouth work. And Absolutely. like I said, people will probably come back to you for more work if they actually, if you did a good job and you're pleasant to be around. So I think, yeah, trying to cultivate relationships. Mm, okay. It's an important thing. I think that's fantastic advice. One of the things a lot of people 
when, you know, both with their time, but also prints or whatever it is that they're trying to actually make money out of, they struggle with pricing. What oh. do you do around pricing? And yes. is there a formula you use or is there... I know there's no magic formula that anybody has, but how, how do you go about it? How do you approach it? So, yeah, it's really tricky. It's probably one of the trickiest things in, in running a business, I would say. There isn't a price table anywhere yeah. <laughs> you can refer to. It changes a lot depending on how well known the photographer is, depends on which where they live and work. Often, sometimes you might find other people's fees online, but not always. So you don't really know what other people are charging most of the time. Yeah. Mm. It's a matter of finding a fee which basically cover your costs and a bit more, but it's still, it's a really fine line, basically. <laughs> so it's something that will cover your cost and yep. give you some profit but it's still not going to be too much for your client. And it's always a struggle. And a lot I does depend on the client too. Sorry? A lot does depend on the client too. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't think it's an easy thing. I don't think there is an easy answer for price. I still struggle with it. And then, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is a fine line that you need to find, basically, depending on the client and what sort of work you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And you need to pay the bills. So it's just, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. In terms of where you live, Margaret River, it's a stunning area. How do you think that has shaped how you shoot as opposed to what you shoot? Obviously, you've got forest, vineyards, coastal scenery. There's uh, all sorts of things in your local area that you can get to very easily. How has it shaped how you shoot? I think... And possibly because I do a lot of sports events I, and everything is outdoors, I think I had to learn to work with whatever weather is thrown at me. If it's windy, if it's raining, if it's misty, you just need to work around it and find a way of coming up with a good picture. So I think that's actually been really good training in a way. You don't always get the beautiful sunny days with the ocean looking amazing, you do get a whole lot of different weather thrown at you. And oh. yeah, so I think it's probably one thing that I had to learn. Normally you see photos of Margaret River, it's looking amazing and sunny and beautiful sunset at the winery, but yep. it's like any other place, you do get days where the weather is not that nice. <laughs> and especially, yeah, so you might need to actually work with whatever weather you've got. Yeah. That's always a, a challenge when you're doing client work and particularly travel work where they they want a nice sunny day and it rains for th three weeks and you go. Right. In terms of where you are, do you have a favourite spot nearby or a favourite spot elsewhere in the world that you just keep getting called back to? Uh, I, I have a lot of favourite spots and it's a bit tricky to pick one. I mean, the Here where I live, I'm very attracted to the ocean, obviously. I did mention, I don't know if I mentioned to you, but I had a, I'm an oceanographer originally. Yep. That was my, how I started uh, my career. So even though I don't work as an oceanographer now anymore, I'm still really passionate about the ocean. Mm -hmm. So I'm attracted to the coast and this area here, any anywhere between the two capes, Cape Louis and Cape Nat Naturalist has got um, stunning landscape and beaches and there is, yeah, it's just like endless. I've been living here for more than 20 years and every now and then I might still find a little spot that I actually have never been to. Yeah. So one thing I really enjoy doing is walking the Cape to Cape track or choosing a little section of it to do. Often you find dolphins or you might see, I've seen seals, I've seen, there is, whole season of whale migration uh, you see them both when they are migrating north towards warmer waters and migrating down south back towards antarctic waters for feeding so it's just yeah it's stunning and it changes every day yeah. you mentioned oceanography how do you think that shaped your photography does it has it given you a, a different perspective on, on the ocean and the way that it interacts with the land and so forth and therefore 
that's changed your perspective with your photography? I don't know if it's changed my, I do, I'd like to have a little better understanding and knowledge and about the ocean because I do photograph it a lot. So currents, animals, like the whale migration, all those things I find really interesting. And there are things I like to photograph and it's just, yeah, it's a big part of me. And I often have photos uh, on my personal work. I would often include the ocean. There will be images of the ocean or the coast somewhere. What has photography taught you about nature? Oh. (laughs) The other way around. You studied oceanography, but what what has photography taught you about nature? Yes. It's a very very delicate thing. (laughs) Nature is a delicate balance, really. And Mm. I... Would love to see actually more people photographing nature because we do, yeah, there is, there is a lot that needs doing. Mm, yeah. Um, and I think people don't care about things they don't know. So it's a way of actually showing things that maybe people don't know and hopefully they will care about it and do the changes which are needed. But the other thing I love about nature is, and I do try to include in my photos, is situations where they actually, where the planet actually puts on a show and makes you feel pretty insignificant. So those are actually the images I chase. And I love being in those situations where you basically feel like a speck of dust on the planet. (laughs) So I don't know, it could be like trying to, um, I, I was in many years ago in Turner photographing um, Mount Yasur, which is an active volcano there. And just having the the ground shaking and the light show of lava bubbling inside the crater, the noise of the explosions and the smell of sulfur, um, just everything that makes you feel alive and, and, and basically pretty significant. <laughs> wow. But that's the thing I love about nature is, is it teaches you yeah, how to be, basically puts you back in your place. <laughs> yeah, I know it's probably not a good thing to say, but I think there is a lot of people who are very self-centered. Yep. And that's, I think it's important to actually have those, would be great if those people could actually go through those some of those situations and be put back into their place. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I do, that's one thing I love about nature is basically how, yeah, it's just can be quite overwhelming sometimes when you feel insignificant. Yeah, it's just, yeah, there are quite a few situations that I think a, a few moments where I did feel like that. And, yeah. and it makes you feel really present in the moment. That's the other beautiful thing about it. Absolutely. Yeah. That was obviously a very memorable experience have you had any horror stories any experiences oh. where things haven't gone quite right uh, I, I don't think I had any horror stories I probably had a few near misses yeah I don't remember any terrible horror stories I had a few near misses with the drone I was flying my drone in Svalbard so okay. I was in a kayaking expedition in Svalbard. So I went out on a Zodiac and there was just myself and the crew manning the Zodiac. So I launched from the Zodiac and there was almost no wind and no current. And But basically I was launching the drone from a moving platform to try and follow moving targets, which were the kayakers. And we were the, the the zodiac was moving and i was following the the kayakers and just got some amazing shots and got really carried away and then obviously when i realized i didn't have a lot of battery left and when it came time to actually land the drone there was quite a lot of wind the recurrence the crew member could really couldn't really keep the zodiac from moving so it was actually very tricky to land the drone and i normally hand launch and hand grab the drone so i had only one hand really to control the drone and try to land it on this moving zodiac with wind and current and everything i nearly lost my drone but 
Luckily, I didn't. I got some beautiful shots, but yeah, it's quite challenging. Yeah. Man. There are a few situations like that, but I don't think I actually had any horror stories. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm playing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer photographing alone or with other people? I like both, actually. Yeah. Um, I think the advantage of doing it alone is that you can time yourself. If you want to spend two hours in the same spot, waiting for something to happen, it's fine. There is nobody around and you don't yeah. feel guilty about it. If there are other people, of course, you need to follow the rhythm of the group. But I really enjoy the to exchange ideas. And there are situations where I've been through photo tours with other photographers and we might all be sitting right next to each other, photographing the same subject, and each person will come with a completely different image. And I think that's just amazing. It's just, and so I actually like both. Yeah, it depends on the situation, I'd say. Yeah, that, that's one of my favourite things if you are photographing in a group is that you can be stood within 10 feet of one another and everyone comes up with something completely different. Different, yes, yes. I think those different perspectives make a, make a big difference to how people see their compositions, how people compose is, can be completely different between two different photographers. Exactly, yes. In terms of when you've finished in the field and you've got back home, are you straight into editing or do you like to leave things to marinate for a little bit before you get into it? If it's a, if it's commercial work for a client, I like to download and make sure I've got it there. So I normally download straight away. There's just usually make... time limits with those sorts of gigs. So. Sorry? There's usually a time limit with those sorts of gigs. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, but it's just to make sure I've got it there and yep. it's safe and it's backed up again and it's just, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, depending on how much time I need to deliver the work, but... I, I would normally start working straight away, but I definitely always want to to download. And even if it's personal work, I like to have a quick look. Yep. But yeah, but I have noticed that sometimes, especially personal work, sometimes you might go back a year later and you see something, an image that when you first took it looked amazing or you thought it was amazing. And then you look at it again a year later and it just doesn't look that good. Yep. Probably uh, because you because it's so fresh when you took the image, you actually still have the memory of sights and smells and noise. And it's just, it's all part of your experience. But yeah. then later on, when you look at just the image, sometimes it doesn't actually translate all the other elements mm -hmm. uh, into one single image. So yeah, it's, it's always, it's hard to find the time to actually go back <laughs> to work you've done a while ago, but it, I think it's good because you see it with um, like completely different eyes and you might actually yeah. find a gem in a group of images that you at first didn't think were actually any special image. So it's mm. both ways, I think. I know this might sound weird, but I found that taking a bit of time off going out and shooting and creating more images to go through in the archive, just <laughs> saying, okay, this week, I'm not going to go out. I'm actually going to go back through the archive and having a look. So again, being organized and, and taking time to do that is, yeah. has really helped me organize some of those things. I, I, I did a bit of a cull of uh, images that were just never going to make the grades. <laughs> yes. Do you do much of that? Do you cull many images or do you keep everything? I don't keep everything, but I probably keep too many. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially, yeah, you end up having to update your storage system all yeah. the time. But, uh, and then finding the time to actually go back to it, it's quite tricky. But yeah, that's probably one thing that I really need to improve in my photography is my Selection skills, yeah, I'm, I reckon I'm quite slow and, it, and um, I find it very hard to actually pick some images out of, yeah, a whole yeah. lot of shoots. I, I, I find for me that one of the biggest problems is trying to detach the emotion of, uh, as you say, the, and even, even leaving it, it could be two or three years later, particularly if it's a travel shot or something, 
that memory of being there and experiencing it and you look at it and go, yeah, it's not the best photo, but I, it, it's still a memory. <laughs> yes, exactly. So where do you see your personal work going in the next few years? What is What direction do you see yourself taking with your personal work? I want to, I'm quite happy to try to keep learning new things and trying different things. I will still be doing, I think, my aerial photography. It's something that, as I mentioned to you, I love doing. I think I'll be doing a lot of traveling still. Yeah, it's, yeah. So the plan is basically to keep traveling and keep experiencing new things and learning. Yeah, you can't stop learning. I think that's really important to keep learning new things and trying to improve your work. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever hit a creative wall with your, with your work? And have you got any strategies that you use or have used to deal with those sorts of things? No, I don't feel... I, it, there are some days where I might not feel like going out and photographing, but yep. I don't think I've ever hit a wall. It's just the love for photography is still there. I just some days yep. I might not feel like doing it. Yep. yep. Those are probably the days where... I would be quite happy to sit down and try to go through some images I've taken on previous travel or, but yeah, no, I don't think I, yes, I don't think I, and especially with uh, sports photography, for instance, you cover an event and you come up with the image. It's not, yeah, it basically keeps you moving because you're always trying to come up with something new and make sure there is something fresh. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think I don't think there's time to hit a wall. <laughs> you just need to, <laughs> yeah. What do you see as photography's place in society? I think so. Photography has always been a way of. Uh, how can I? <laughs> That's okay. Take your time. Yeah, I think photography is it's people. Okay, let me think. <laughs> do you think I'll ask the question in a slightly different way? Do yeah. you think photography's place in society has changed and how has it changed the advent of uh, social media certainly has changed the volume of photography in the marketplace but not just the marketplace but just in terms of people seeing imagery it's now ubiquitous it's everywhere how do you think that's changed the the, the way that people view it yeah I think it's it's quite overwhelming the amount of images out there and the amount of people doing photography. It's very hard to come up with something new and fresh. It's there is a lot of pressure from social media and peer pressure to have the most likes. <laughs> and I think uh, a lot of the time people actually forget to do it for their own personal growth and experience. Absolutely. Um, they're worrying too much about what other people whether people will like or not like it but yeah definitely there are a lot of images out there and it's probably going to be more and more and um, it's very hard to come up with something fresh mm. yeah what do you say is the biggest challenge facing photographers right now yeah i think one is like that it's what i mentioned that it's very hard to do some to come up with something new and I think the other challenge, if you do landscape and nature photography, it's how quickly things are changing. Even beautiful places which are reasonably isolated from busy areas, you still might find quite a lot of rubbish and yeah. weather change, weather, weather pattern changing. So I think for nature photographers it's probably how quickly things are changing and how hard it is to actually find pristine places but that's one more reason to actually get photos of those places and try to bring people's attention to how much needs to be done to make sure things don't get worse and hopefully yeah. too. <laughs> I, I think one of the things that's significantly changed in in my mind is the way that travel or well, the accessibility of travel now to many people has had impacts on some of those remote places that might not be might not have the infrastructure to support 
large numbers of people traipsing around taking photos, sticking their tripods where they probably shouldn't, you know. Yes. And that that's one of the one of the challenges I think we're going to see over, over the next little while is having some of those places start to either deteriorate significantly more than they have or start to be shut off from visitors. Yes. Yeah, it's a tricky one, isn't it? With the yeah. population of the world growing so quickly and accessibility to travel improving. Yeah, that's a very tricky thing. Mm. On the other hand, if you manage to have that experience in that amazing place, you can really tell people, other people that they cannot go there because it's oh, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's a very tricky one. Yes. Where do you see the future of photography going? I think uh, photography is most people take photos to capture a memory and 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 that's always gonna be like that. I don't think, for instance, artificial intelligence will 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 ever be able to replace this personal experience. And I think, yeah, yeah. Sorry, can you repeat your question? I think I got. What's the future of photography? In oh your... yes, yeah. I think, I, like I said, I think I, I hope photography will be still used by a lot of people as a tool to celebrate our planet's natural beauty yep. and and capture memories. And and there's actually there is a monologue on Blade Runner actually where one of the replicants says towards the end of the movie something like I've seen things you people wouldn't believe yeah, yeah I do probably remember and I, something I, like I know all, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah all those moments will be lost in time like tears in the rain or yeah. and I, th I think a good photo is actually a tear which will not be lost in the rain it's just something which will be preserved forever and I think that's that's not going to change. Hopefully it won't. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about being a photographer? I think it's the connection. It's mm -hmm. the being able to connect with nature and with other people. I, I often feel like having a camera in my hands is an excuse to approach a stranger, which is yeah. probably quite weird. But I that happens if I didn't have a camera in my hand, I probably would not have uh, connected with some complete strangers the way I do sometimes when I'm traveling. So I think that's a wonderful thing about photography and being present in the moment. And I think that's actually probably true to an artist or a sports person. If you're doing something you love, you do live in the moment. If you're really, yeah, it's, yeah. I often... When I'm photographing, I get into a zone, which is quite weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But to try to get the shot that I imagine, I might walk a lot, climb places and look through holes and do some pretty weird stuff. I think that people around probably think I'm the weirdest person of them all. But And for some reason, I really don't care about what they think. If I'm in that zone, I just want to get that shot. And it's just pretty, yeah, pretty funny, really. Yeah, nice. What's your least favorite thing about being a photographer? I think I touched on it. It's probably the business side of it. <laughs> Most of the time, I don't mind it. But yeah, it's just having to be, if you're doing it as a freelancer, yeah, having to be a jack of all trades, um, yeah. mm -hmm. I think it's probably the trickiest bit. It definitely yeah. ta takes me out of the mindset of being the, the creative side of things. You know? Yes. And probably the other thing is with digital photography, the way it is now is the amount of time you actually have to spend at the computer. Yeah. As opposed to actually being out in the field and getting photos. And it's not just the editing, it's downloading, it's exporting files. Yep. So I think, yeah, I did start photography back in the time where you're using film and in a way you probably had more time for the photography itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people actually quite enjoy the editing side of it, but I think it's a lot of time spent behind a computer. And I think I'd rather be actually out there. <laughs> the yeah. mm. I can't say I blame you. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best 
or worst piece of advice anyone has ever given you? And it doesn't matter whether it's the best or the worst. It's... Oh, gosh. Sorry, I can't actually think of anything. <laughs> what advice would you give to somebody that's new to photography that was just starting? Probably to be nice and relatable. Yes. Um, I think if you're planning on doing it as a business, it's actually important to be mindful of others and of nature, of the environment around you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What, I guess... What would be your advice for someone starting photography? Me, practice and practice more. Get out in the field and if if you're in landscape, if you if you want to be a studio photographer, get in a studio and I think the more you get out, the more you actually practice. So you, you therefore going to learn how to manage your gear. You're going to learn how to get the right settings for environment that you're in and ultimately that's the only thing that's going to improve your photography is yeah. keep doing it because that's great you, advice yeah <laughs> I, I i think it's, it's very difficult to uh, to do it unless you've actually put the hours in and that's where i think the really yeah. good photographers that are out there now in in the industry the reason they've got there is because they've applied themselves. And that, that's true of most things, whether it's music, mm -hmm. photography, any pursuit. It, it's just get out and do it. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yes, that's true. Yeah, I agree with you. You can definitely notice difference if you're putting in the hours and the practice and the time. Yeah, mm, Definitely, definitely. Pardon me. Are there any photographers out there you think I should be talking to on the podcast? Yeah, landscape photographers. There is one I can think of is Raymond Hoffman. Okay. He is based in Iceland. Yep. And he's got some stunning landscape image from all over the world, but a lot of images from Greenland and Iceland. Fantastic. Yeah. He's a lovely guy. I actually did a photo tour in Greenland with him. There is another one I've seen his work only on social media is Hordur. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce his name, but he's got some amazing images of possibly the best photos I've seen of active volcanoes, drawn yeah. images of volcanoes. I, I imagine he must have destroyed quite a few drones. Yeah, it's a pretty risky pursuit, <laughs> I think, flying something plastic over molten lava. <laughs> yes, but he's got his work is beautiful. Yes, so he's got a lot of images of Iceland again. Yeah, those are the two I can think of. I do follow a lot of other see work from about sports or aerial photography, but I think landscape. Those are the first two that come to mind. <laughs> sure, sure. Thank you for those. I've got one more question, and I I think I know what your answer is going to be, but mm -hmm. I, I may well be wrong. Do you like pineapple on pizza? No. Was that the answer you expected? I thought you were going to say no. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I like pineapple and I love pizza. I just don't like the two you together. Don't like them pushed together. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's probably my Italian background. Uh, I don't think pineapple and pizza. Fair enough. I, I don't mind sweet pizzas, actually. Um, but, yeah, for some reason, pineapple and pizza does not look that good to me. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's not everybody's thing. I get it. It's been really wonderful getting to know you a little bit better, Daniela. Uh, where can people find your work? So my website, which is Daniela Tomasi Photography, Tomasi, T-O-M-A-S-I. I've got a couple of Instagram accounts, one just with aerial photography, which is Daniela Tomasi, and uh, Daniela Tomasi Photography would be the other one. And... Yes, so mostly. And I've got a Facebook account too. So again, Daniela Tomasi Photography. Fantastic. <laughs> Probably oh. my website would be where there is a range of, better range of my work. Yes. I'll make sure all the links are on the, uh, on the show notes. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful having a chat with you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you. Thanks again for listening to Landscape Photography World. I hope you enjoyed the show and keep listening because I'll be joined by some great guests in upcoming episodes. You can find my work in this podcast at grantswinburnphotography.com. 
I'm also on Vero, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Grant Swinburne. Hope to see you out shooting soon.